What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video we are going to go through the setup process of Vienna Ensemble Pro. I'm going to start off by showing you the Vienna Ensemble website which gives you the instructions on how to get your PC or your Mac to communicate with your main machine. Let's go ahead and dive into the instructions that Vienna gave us. So the first thing we're going to look at is the network setup here. So there's a couple things that you need to do and I'm going to walk you through it so that we can do it together and to make sure we don't miss any steps here. So the first thing you want to just keep a mental note because we're not doing this just now, but just look at these IP addresses. You want to keep these IP addresses in mind and this subnet mask as well. We're going to go ahead and skip over that because we have a few things that we need to cover. So for Vienna Ensemble, if you are using, let's say a Mac, you're going to want to make sure that the Mac firewall allows Vienna Ensemble to connect to your network. So the way we find this screen, if it does not automatically pop up for you, is we're going to go to the settings and we're going to go to security and privacy. Now, this is an older instruction. If you're using uh, the new update for Mac, which is going to be, let's see, Sonoma or S Sonoma. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but one of those, you're going to go into system preferences and then you're going to see that it's here. It says privacy and, and security. We're not going to click that. We're going to go actually to network because they switched to where this is at. And we're going to go into firewall. Once we're in firewall, we're going to go into the options of the firewall. And here you're going to see all of the incoming connections that you have allowed. And you're going to see that if I scroll down here, Vienna Ensemble is the last server here to create that connection. So we're going to go ahead and leave that alone. It's allowing all the connection. So from here, all you're going to do is hit that allow button and it should allow you to communicate with your Mac. So that's all of the setup that you need to do with the Mac firewall. Now we're going to go down to Windows firewall and here it's going to say that they want you to activate these ports. Now these ports are the ones specifically that Vienna is using because generally there's nothing going through these ports and it's going to be a clear path for Vienna to send signal to. So we're going to take a look at these ports and we're going to follow along here. So we're going to open up the Windows firewall with advanced security. And let me just go ahead and flip over to my Mac so that you can see it. So here we're going to go into the Windows firewall and we're going to click on that. It's going to look something like this. And again, I might blur out some sections because I don't know exactly what is sensitive information or not. And just to keep my information safe, I'm going to blur out everything except the Vienna stuff here. So here we have the Vienna stuff and we're going to go ahead and jump right back into my Mac and we're going to follow these rules. So we're going to go and choose inbound rules. We're going to click on that, which is the little button that you're going to see on the left panel here. You're going to click on new rule, which is going to be on the right side of your screen. And after you do that, you're going to hit port. And this is coming straight from the Vienna Ensemble software manual. We're going to go to the next page and we're going to create a TCP connection. And we're going to go ahead and specify the 6472-6473, which is the two ports right up here. And we're going to include it just like this with dashes in between. Now here in the manual, it just does the UDP right next to it. So you do have to finish one of these processes first, but Let's go ahead and just skip over that really quick. You're going to hit allow connection because that's the part that comes right after protocol and ports. Action, allow connection. Then you're going to go to the profile. You're going to leave all of these checked and you're going to hit next. And then you're going to call it VE Pro TCP. So let's go ahead and jump into my PC and see where that connection is. So if we look at it, I have that connection right here. I have it highlighted now. And you're going to see that I have the ports that we specified, the 6472 and 6473. So now we're going to go back into the Mac and we're going to do the same thing with the UDP. So we're going to go create a new rule and we're going to hit UDP this time. But this time we're going to specify port 6474-6477, which is these four ports right over here. The only thing is, is that we're going to put 6474-6477 which includes all those ports in between. And then the same thing happens here. We're going to go into the screen. You're going to allow the connection and then you're going to allow these three profiles to be checked. And then instead of calling it TCP, we're going to call it VE Pro UDP. So now if we jump over to the PC, we're going to see that I have my UDP on here. So look at it right here. And then everything is the same except look at the ports that I've allowed, which is the ones that were listed inside of the manual. Perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and jump right back into the Mac. And let me show you the part where 
I told you to skip over for now, which is the IP address. So you're gonna choose one or the other. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. I chose to go with 192.168.0.x, meaning you could put a number here. So on the Mac side, so in my case, my Mac is my main machine. So I'm gonna go into the system settings and I'm gonna go into the network tab. So now here, it might look a little different depending on which update you're on on the Mac. It might still be the old settings menu, but you're still gonna to go to where it says network and then you're gonna to go to where it says ethernet. We're gonna click that because again, the PC and the Mac is going through the ethernet port. And we're gonna look at the IP address and the subnet mask. So notice how here I'm using 192.168.0.1 for the main machine. So the dot one is gonna be the main machine going through the ethernet. And the subnet mask, regardless of which one you choose over here, you're gonna do 255.255.255.0. And if you are using this version of Mac, the way we change these, you just have to click details and then go to TCP IP. And then here you're able to change the IP and subnet mask. You're gonna click okay. Those settings should be configured. And now you have the ethernet port responding to 192.168.0.1. Now my sample library machine, the PC, is going to recognize the Mac through this IP address. Now let's go ahead and jump over to the PC to see how we set up the connection there. So now here, I'm gonna go into my settings and we are gonna go back to the main menu here. So a little hamburger, and then I'm gonna go to network and internet. And now here, I'm gonna go into ethernet settings. And then notice how here you're gonna have, in this case, I have two ethernet ports. One of them is a 2.4 gigahertz port and the other one is like the symbol and icon I'm gonna put it on the screen right now. It kind of looks like three TVs that are connected to each other. That's the one I have my ethernet connected to. Why? Because it's better to use if you have a PC that has a gigabit ethernet port to connect it there because it's going to be a more stable and faster connection. So don't quote me on this, but I've heard from other people that if you do not have a gigabit connection, then the ethernet cable needs to be a specific one and it's called an ethernet crossover cable. So if your port is not a gigabit connection, then you need to use a crossover cable. Now, if you do have a gigabit connection, which mine is, and the way you can tell is if you look at the screen where your ethernet settings are, it says 1000 megabits per second. And that's how you know that it's a gigabit per second. So if you do have one, then it does not matter if you're using a crossover or just a standard ethernet cable. Of course, you might wanna use anything above a Cat5e cable, because um, they're the only ones that are able to withstand a gigabit connection. So we're gonna go ahead and jump back into the PC and we're gonna go into the port that's connected with the ethernet. So this one says not connected, so we're not gonna worry about that one. This one says no internet, but this is where I connected my port, right? So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue following the same format that Vienna gave us in the manual. I'm gonna use 192.168.0.2 because my Mac is already dot one. And if I try putting dot one on this machine, it would say, hey, there's an error because there's a device here locally that is using dot one IP address. So we're gonna put this as dot two. And then here we're gonna put the IP, the IPv4 mask, which is also the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. And then here we're going to, don't worry about the DHCP here. You don't need to worry about that. And then here, this is what I was talking about, the gigabit speed. So 1000 megabits per second is essentially a gigabit network. So here it says Intel i211 gigabit network connection. So now when you are done with that, that is all of the setup that you need to do. And of course it may seem simple, but when you don't have someone kind of guiding you along, this can get pretty complex and the instructions isn't as detailed or thorough as I am explaining it to you. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into Vienna Ensemble and see if we can make that connection. So I'm gonna go into Vienna Ensemble. Here is my Vienna Ensemble page. And I'm gonna go ahead and load up Cubase because I do not have it open right now. So now I have my Cubase session up and here you see that I have my sample libraries running. 
And if I go to configurations and I hit all, you're going to see that I have all of my samples here, my entire template, which in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to build out a template inside of Cubase. Let's go ahead and see if it's getting some signal. So the way we could find out really quickly is we don't actually need to go back into the PC. I can hit my right panel here and I'm just going to open up one of these sections and you're going to see that here it says that I'm connected to a computer called Megatron because I called my computer Megatron. If you're a Transformers fan, you will know what that is. And you can see that it's located at 192.168.0.2. And that's the IP address that we use to configure our PC. So notice how automatically when I hit that connect button, it shows up as the string section inside of Vienna Ensemble. So what happens, let me show you what happens before the initial connection. So if I hit disconnect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit connect and you're going to see that Vienna Ensemble says, hey, there is an instance inside of Vienna Ensemble. I'm not being used. Is this the possible section or instance that you're looking for, which is the word that Vienna uses? So we're going to go ahead and say, yes, well, I need strings. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the string section hit connect. Now it's connected to strings. So here I'm back into the PC. I'm going to go into the string section, which is the one we just connected, go into the violin section, and then I'm going to, well, contact already open. So now you see how it says violins one true legato. I'm going to go into, let's switch back to my Mac so you can see this. I'm going to go into my string section, find violin one right here, and I have it called as violin legato, but in the patch it says true legato. And now I'm going to go ahead and highlight it and I'm going to click on it. And you're going to see that I'm getting signal down here. You should see the signal going through. So you can see the audio moving here, but I don't have my audio connected. So you won't hear any sound, but you could definitely see that there is something happening. If I open up meter, you can see that I do have sound going on here. So now let's go back into the PC and see what it looks like on the Vienna side. So now here, if I click on it, you see that I'm getting signal off of that one. Now, if I go to, let's say, Spiccato, look at the third instance. So right over here, you're going to see the third instance Spiccato. There it is going. I'm going to go down to Bartok Pits. So that's right here. There it is working. And then I'm going to go into Trem Soul Pond and there it is working. So there's one more thing I do wanna go over because I did all of these steps correctly, but there was only one step that for some reason, it's nowhere inside the manual, but it happened to me and maybe it can happen to you and it was driving me crazy trying to figure out the answer. So we're gonna go back into the Windows firewall. If you're using a Mac, then you probably won't go through this trouble, but if you are using a PC to feed your main machine. Let's go back into the Windows firewall so we can check out what happened. So we're going to go into the PC again and we're going to go into the firewall. And now here when I'm in the firewall, you're going to see that it says Vienna Ensemble Pro here. So notice how there's four instances of Vienna Ensemble Pro. When you first install Vienna Ensemble Pro in the new machine, this is automatically going to populate for you. So you don't even need to do these connections. Part of the installation process of Vienna Ensemble is accepting them to open up these ports and allow firewall connections to go through. But one problem that happened to me was for some odd reason, I had one of them, let's say this one, I'm not sure exactly which one it was, uh, probably the one that says public. So let's go here because it says public here. And it was on this right side, disable rule. Look what pops up here. So if I move this icon and go back, I'm not sure why it's not populating here, but it showed a little like no cancel sign, like that right circle with the slash. Uh, right now it's empty, I'm not sure why, but it showed up like that and it was not enabled. And I wasn't sure what was going on. But when I checked my firewall settings again, I went to this same exact setting and I hit enable rule. Now when you hit enable rule, notice how that green check mark comes back. And then when I jumped into Cubase, everything instantly worked. So it was literally just because of that one rule that was disabled for whatever reason, it wasn't working. So that is how you connect a 
slave machine, if you want to call it that way, but that is how you connect a second computer into your main machine and allow that connection with Vienna to pass through into the Mac Studio or your main machine. All right, so that is all of the information I have for you for getting the PC or your second computer running on Vienna Ensemble and making sure those two connections are paired so that you're able to set up your sample libraries on your second machine and have your main machine running smoothly. If you do have any questions about the process or you're running into some issues, just drop your comments down below. I will get to them as soon as I can to help you out with any troubleshooting that you need. But if you follow these steps down to the T, then you should have no problem setting up your second machine. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.